Bed works. Okay, so I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. 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 Somebody still sleeping, snoring? Okay. Um, so, hello. This is all about. Um, well, this was the shortest title I could come up with. Uh, I spent uh, almost a year on working on this for a client. And oh, right, thank you. <laughs> that might be help, especially for the recording. Yeah, you're absolutely, absolutely right. Okay, so this is yeah, this, this works, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, from the top, two, three, four. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Anybody still awake? Okay. Um, so this is about a project. This is a small, the shortest title that I could come up with uh, to describe what I have been doing. Um, and, um, well, yeah, let's just start and see if this works. Yeah, it does. Okay, so, um, usually a speaker starts with an introduction. And I've made this into a demo democratic process. So there are two options for you guys and girls. Um, we, I have a high impact introduction of me. You really get to know me. And I have you know, the low impact, you know, the average business kind of, hi, I'm Bob, you know, that guy. But I'm not Bob, but... As an example. So, who's in favor of the first option? That's not a lot. Okay, who's in favor of the second option? That's a, a, a bit of a lame crowd, you know, there's nothing, to, probably the lunch, you know, it's simmering in your belly. Okay, um, well, it's 50 50. Okay, you know what? I'm doing both. <laughs> uh, I'll start with this one. Uh, oh no, I have to. Yeah, that should work, I guess. Yeah, so I'm uh, father of five. This is a, a picture um, with uh, all girls, and two of them are special. Let's call them special. Okay, so uh, I've been ex uh, I've been a firefighter for many years, rescuing a dog from a uh, from a small lake which uh, doesn't sound pretty interesting, but the lake was a uh, long story. Anyway, uh, this was my helmet, and this piece is melted. It was warm, but it was an exercise, so really funny. Um, I've been doing st stuff with scouting. So I have a picture of this. I wrote some books, I think about 10, and these are three of them. Um, and I'm a caretaker, so all, all those pictures are in balance. So uh, this is us, or me, taking care of one of the kids. Uh, then, oh yeah, there's this LibrePlan open source project. It's an awesome project planning uh, tool uh, with the logo up there. And, oh, I started a new thing called Chateau Ite. And that's, it. is there anybody here from France? Okay, um, Mon Niveau Francais C'est Faible. Um, and the rest is in English. The, um, <laughs> um, I just said I, I'm bad at, English, at, at French. Uh, anyway, um, I'm, I bought a small farm and I'm going to convert people from whatever background into IT. Been doing that in the past, more on the website, and uh, no shameless plug. But this is what I bought, and this is going to be a, a training uh, room where I'm going to um, make programmers out of people. So, and this is the, the, the lame version, you know, uh, my name, title, author of some books, dad, for the, so this is less impact, right? Okay, questions, no questions, because we don't have the time for questions. Um, what do I do? Open source consultancy, teaching training, retraining from X to IT. Uh, thanks to Inkscape, I, even I could make a nice logo. Um, I write some books, oh yeah, and I'm not an expert, I know nothing. So I'm not a security expert, I'm not an Ansible expert. Um, ah, that, that's uh, to, to draw the stage. Also, are there people here from England? Okay, then this will probably resonate to you. Uh, I'm Dutch, so we speak English words, but we don't speak the English language. For instance, if an Englishman would say, uh, let's take from Ransom, oh, that's very interesting. I hear, uh, what, what he means is, I don't like it, but what I hear is, oh, he's interested, right? So, um, a lot of subtleties in, in that language. 
So I'm Dutch, I speak English words, not an English language. Um, okay, project in short. Um, I started building an IT landscape at a company and I copied the sort of internal deployment standards from another company in the group of companies. And Proxmox virtualization, uh, free IPA, and it's not beer, but free IPA as in LDAP authentication. Um, and I installed a bunch of applications, XWiki, ZX Jenkins, Nextcloud, GitLab, Odoo, CMD Build, I'm coming to that later, and all in separate virtual machines. No biggie, right? Um, and I got the question um, if I could upgrade this. Well, sure. Um, so I proposed to make everything single sign-on. And um, uh, I wanted to do that using Ansible Playbooks because um, it makes it recurrent, your configuration. You're, you're not trying this and trying that and at the end it works and you've forgotten how you got there. So I made, made playbooks, you fire it to a server and you've got a configured application. Um, and so that's how my adventure started. Uh, some lingo in this. Applications that use a single channel is SP, service provider, because they provide an application service. Um, and um, the application that does single sign-on identity is the identity provider, the IDP. Um, in our case, I chose the Keycloak server. Imagine my surprise after doing this for three quarters of a year, making everything to Keycloak, there is a very fancy other project called Midpoint. So if anybody wants to support this to Midpoint, please do. Um, but anyway. Oh, the ACS, the Assertion Consumer Service URL. Yay. Um, it sort of means that your browser, where you're going to the SP, the, your application, redirects you to the login screen of the central authentication server, Keycloak. And then Keycloak needs to know what the ACS is to redirect back if your, uh, your login is successful. So it's, it's simple, but the lingo, it, anyway. Um, and Ansible, language to write configuration recipes. I guess you know that. Okay, uh, this is interactive. Who doesn't know that? Shakes your head. Okay. <laughs> They're not recipes. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> sure, right. Um, okay, and Jason, stuff. That's the only good thing that came from JavaScript, in my opinion, right? Um, basic process flow, user clicks log in on some application, uh, browser is redirected to IDP, like I said, user is presented with a login, logs in successfully or error denied, if not yet to have a configured but set as mandatory, he, she gets the setup a dialog, you know, install this app, uh, scan this QR code, etc. Um, so that's not mandatory, but you can switch that on if you like. Um, and then you're redirected back to the SP with some credentials proven uh, he's successful or gone. And you have sort of a ticket on the IDP. Which means that if from another application you want to log on, you're also redirected to the IDP. He, the IDP will say, oh, wait a minute, you've got a live ticket, so you're authenticated and redirects you back. So there is transparency and no, not, not an again a login screen. Oh, this is gone. New technical assistant. <laughs> Please explain to me why you do an experiment in the middle of a talk. I want to get your slides on the stream as well. Why? <laughs> hey, slides! Well, you, well, you, wait a minute. I have, I have to switch. The, uh, where's my mouse? There, there's a mouse somewhere in this. That down there. And I have to switch. Down. Down. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Okay, so yeah, we, we did this already. Okay. Uh, existing ticket also okay, okay, basic SSO. Uh, user ID is our free IPA, key cloak for the web SSO server, syncs with free IPA. If you if this is your setup, start with that also on the experimentation side, because if you start doing this with only key cloak and later sync to free IPA, your uh, user IDs change. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I had a very short night of sleep, so I could I could do better other times. Is this on camera? Oh, damn. <laughs> um, Keycloak has a client definition. Oh, yeah. So, on the IDP, Keycloak, there is a client definition for every uh, connected application. And... Um, I, my first application that, application that I added was XWiki. Now, that is documented on the XWiki wiki, where they are using XWiki as their wiki, of course, um, as one does. And this was walk in the park. Easy. 20 minutes, up and running, I'm happy. And I thought, ah, this is a very simple project. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, good documentation, saves the day. Uh, and, uh, and, and anyway, I started adding other applications. Um, Kiko client list looks like this. So you have a client ID, some type, as SAML or OpenID Connect, and uh, the URL uh, it needs to, the ACS, it needs to relocate back to. Um, let's have a look at the program flow. Uh, I have two Ansible variable files, one with global VARs and one with encrypted global VARs, nothing fancy there. Playbooks works on the application, VM, and retrieves from Keycloak the endpoint info, as in, okay, what's your exposed endpoint where I should authenticate to? Um, checks if the client exists, and if yes, deletes it, because I was making clients, so if from a previous experiment that didn't work. There was a client, I wiped it, and I started again. Um, I fill in a client definition template, that's a JSON file, upload that to Keycloak to make the client. Which means that um, in my connection with my application, I have a, a set of variables that are created and, and filled in, and use that to fill JSON upload it to Keycloak so the client is there and then I get from Keycloak, for instance, if it's OpenID Connect it works with a shared secret, so first you have to create a client on the Keycloak then that will create a secret, then I have to download a secret to my running playbook to implement it into the configuration of the application right? everybody still awake? No, just checking from time to time Okay, um, uh, checks if clients created successfully, download, shared secret if relevant, and uh, yeah, leaves you with a configured application. Uh, oh yeah, some of those applications are not configurable by Ansible simply with a vanilla installation. Uh, for instance, um, Jenkins. So Jenkins you can remotely configure if you configure the REST interface plugin or something. But I have a vanilla installation, so I don't have a REST interface to Jenkins. So in that case, the last part of my playbook simply writes out text to the system admin as in, go to this URL, fill this value into this form, fill this value into this form, etc., etc. Click on this button, it should be I had real morons in my mind, so it should be easy. Um, now, this is a SAML example um, of the, the playbook. Global variables, repository, setup of, of Postgres stuff. Um, uh, create some, of, uh, oh yeah, create a, a, a token and then run XML starlet to retrieve X 
509 certificate, store that output it again in a variable, put that into your config. I, everybody can read this, right? It's very simple. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a simple delete the client, convert the template to the variable, upload it, etc. etc. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm sort of continuously repeating myself. But anyway, um, some tricks that are noteworthy. Now, this is the part where this, this becomes interesting because I had the extreme luxury of being in a, a signal group of friends and a few of them were Ansible core developers. So, no help desk email, wait for a ticket, somebody assigns it to an engineer, no, it's, oh, how do I do this? Oh, like so, oh, hey, thanks. Um, extremely cool. Anyway, um, so this is sort of the template language in JSON that you send to the Keycloak server um, with stuff like, you know, base URL, the admin URL, um, and oh, the ID, and the ID needs to be a random UUID. So how do you make an Ansible? Well, maybe you're all experts and I'm not, that's also possible. Who knows here how to make a random UUID? Okay, one expert in the room. Okay, so maybe the rest is, 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 is happy that I'm telling this. Um, you simply say look up uh, a random string, length 20 to UUID, and then you've got a random UUID. It's as simple as that. Um, well, it seems simple now, but if you're trying to make that happen, it takes a little bit longer. Um, you put in your certificate and your private key in variables, upload the stuff, and um, yeah. Also, on the internet, there are blog posts of people who already configured an application for single channel, for instance, ZX. But um, within SAML, you can define attributes that will be exchanged, and that's one way to get a user ID across. But you could also simply send the user's email address, which is easier than make a separate mapper. So the blog post talks about mapper. So you first you configure that and you say, oh, okay, this works, but it tells me that it's not as simple as it should be. So then you can um, experiment until it works. Um, well, once you have a working setup, um, uh, yeah, this is the part where I encourage everybody to add um, applications. So there is a, a Git repository with all the playbooks, and they're all free to use, and you're happy to it. Uh, all thanks to the company who allowed me to do this uh, project. Um, and uh, by the way, it's one Stein in uh, the Netherlands. Um, but anyway, once you have a working setup of your application that I have not yet, uh, made a playbook for in, in the repository. There is in the contrib a uh, get keycloak clients list and that uh, dumps all the client definitions. And you simply with your favorite editor, um, I used to say Vim, but there are people who are using something else. Um, um, you simply pick out the, 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 the client definition that works, replace it with the variables similar to the work I've done previously. Um, pipe it through JQ to, to uh, get the indentation uh, nicely. Um, and oh yeah, if you want to do a diff, then this one-liner will really save your day. It's uh, how to compare two JSON files because the order is not mandatory in JSON. So um, I found this somewhere on the internet and I was really happy. Uh, yes. Gotchas. Um, everything works better when using HTTPS. So if you start doing this with HTTP, no. Uh, for instance, for one, Keycloak will say, yeah, I want to redirect to H. Why is there no HTTPS? Well, that's sort of the reaction, the response of the server. So, um, don't try this with HTTP, which I did. I know, I'm stupid. But then again, I started with saying I was no expert, right? 
Um, Tomcat expects an SSL key store file and it must have the password change it. Don't change it, it must have that password. <laughs> um, some application developers can't read. Maybe this is something you would expect. Um, but I didn't. So, for instance, in the standard, the SAML standard, it's like, okay, the client ID is a string, could be the URL, but it's, it's not mandatory. Some applications, the URL is mandatory. So, it takes a while to figure out why it's not working, because it's all according to standard, and then, oh, let's try the URL. And now it works. Um, I, uh, I heckled the developer a lot on some, on <laughs> during FOSDEM. Um, anyway, um, what else have we got? Uh, some applications are very badly documented. And um, this, is, this is actually a thing. So I do understand that some businesses who make an open source product like to persuade users to buy a subscription, um, but to make manuals that only scratch the surface and as soon as you want to do something a little more complex like single channel, it, you, get, you, you run into a wall, a really big, big wall. Um, so if anybody on the internet sees this video and is responsible for the documentation of an application that's open source, please document your stuff. This is, this is deep, you know? Is, okay. Um, adding free EPA Keycloak user ID sync midway, like I sort of said already, not a good idea. Um, and, well, you know, Ansible can solve just about any problem. That's, that's the cool thing about this. It's, well, you're sitting here in the Ansible room, so I'm probably saying, telling you nothing new, but this thing, Ansible, is, is majorly cool. Unless somebody here has a different opinion than I... No, okay, thought so. Uh, oh yeah, do not use Keycloak version 18. That's unless you want to get into why is a single attribute for a role list at the, and the application is, is telling you, no, I can't accept uh, multiple role lists. Yeah, but I said it used, should be single, so there's a bug in there. Um, after that, it's, it's fine. They just relocated the admin interface completely between 19 and 10 and 20, but you know, that's, that's not so much. But this one was, was uh, not so fine. Um, yeah, this. Okay, uh, your job, if you choose to accept it. <laughs> Typing a keyboard, no. Do a git pull, git up, one stein bv project single sign on. Use it and add to it. Please send me PRs of your applications. So that at the end of it, now we have, you know, GitLab, Jenkins, Nextcloud, XWiki, Zabbix, CMD build, which is by the way an awesome CMDB, except for the documentation, but I'll mention that briefly. Um, but it's, as, as software goes, it's, it's excellent. Um, but there we could add more applications due to this, so that single salon for open source becomes a, a no-brainer, you know? And, and, and not everybody has to go through the same frustration, frustrated experience of hooking up all different kinds of applications. So please, send me PRs of, of your Ansible playbook, of course, and not anything else. Um, if, you, if your application does SAML, start with the ZX playbook, because it's pretty easy to read, not really complex. If it's OpenID Connect, start with XWiki. It's good, very good, uh, very good documented online and um, by, by the XWiki team. Um, well, tweak and tune until you have a working config and then send me a PR. Please. Um, well, I'm almost done. 
Um, now comes the shameless plug, because during this event, at a quarter to five, at the odd, Mr. Breno de Winter will do a talk about looking at security with cat eyes, which is about OpenCat, Dolog, which is an amazing uh, security vulnerability scanner. Um, so, yeah, I thought let's, let's take the opportunity and do a little bit of advertising for him. Uh, he doesn't pay me for this, by the way. This is completely free of my own will. Um, okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions or are people will sleep? <coughs> Yes. So I have to guess, you didn't use any of the, key, the existing keycloak modules for any part. They're all garbage. Oh, well, good to, good to know. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. It's, um, Can you repeat the questions for the video? Oh, yeah, sorry, for the video. Uh, if I, uh, if I, the gentleman over there, the kind gentleman over there, distinguished gentleman over there, uh, asked me the question whether I use any of the existing modules in Keycloak for this work, and I said no, and he said, well, they were, they're crap anyway. So, but the camera is on me and not on him, so I can repeat what he said, right? <laughs> okay, um, any more questions? Okay, it, do you think, yeah, sure. Um, how did you test your, uh, your Ansible playbook before Sending it to deployment. Ah, right. Um, well, the, the I right. was in the repeat the, oh, repeat the question. Um, again, please. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really short night, you know, and it's not because of a party with beer. It isn't. It's just a, anyway. So again, okay, sorry. How did you test your playbook before sending it to deployment? Okay. How did I test my playbook playbook before deploying it into production? Okay. Um, well, I was in the fortunate circumstance that this was an IT company with not a lot of IT infrastructure. So I could play around and then say, it's done. Hey, look, it's in production. So that, that was, but um, you, could, you could use these playbooks also in, in a, a DTAP environment. Um, or only use acceptance and deployment and, and production, of course, but because you have a second Keycloak server, uh, then uh, you can first test this installing of applications on, on any test server to the, to the test IDP. And if everything works, you change a few variables, you run it again and it's deployed in production. So it's, it's pretty easy to, to separate it. Uh, but don't do it if you're drunk, drinking alcohol, or haven't sleep, slept a lot. That, because then you, if you mix up variables, things can go wrong. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's, it, it works. It's, uh, yeah, you're welcome. The, 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 the frustrating thing about this is that all those applications don't work until they do. So you're trying a lot of stuff and, and reading and, oh, um, oh yeah, Bitwarden is also supported. And I had a talk with, let's say, a random support engineer because the single sign-on stuff is SAML and OpenID Connect. That's sort of beyond the normal support people's pay grade or something. So it's like, yeah, I've got a, 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 a sheet of paper here and I'll tell you what the settings should be. That's the level of support that you can get as a paying client, by the way. Um, so I try to document as much as possible. I try to put in the uh, playbooks uh, URLs of uh, articles that I found helpful. I also made on GitHub in the wiki section uh, a page with my memory dump of everything that I learned while doing this for a specific application. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I forgot anything. So it's, I try to document this as good as possible. Any more questions? Yes? Are there any applications you would like to see added? Sorry. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, a question from the audience, distinguished gentleman over there. If there is any application I would like to see added to this as well. Um, well, I had a, a large part freedom to, cho to choose the applications that I wanted to, to deploy in that organization. So there are people, for instance, that are a big fan of Prometheus, and that's rightfully so. But I, I like Zabbix, and this is not a Docker cloud <laughs> Kubernetes environment, so yeah, deploy Zabbix. Um, so I did all the applications that had a reason for being there at that company. Um, but there are, well, for instance, I met a very nice gentleman at the Nextcloud conference, and they were from Open Project, I believe, or Project Open. Well, it's, I have Libre Plan, so I know project management, but there is uh, Plus Project, Project Plus, Project Open, Open Project, Libre, Proi, Proi, Libre. You know, you, the, all the kind of variations, and uh, some of them are really cool. So, yeah, if, if and they, they, they develop that stuff, so it should be relatively easy for them to uh, download this, uh, check out this Git repo and, and uh, uh, tweak um, a playbook for their application because they know how it should be configured. So, um, um, yeah, please do so. Um, and as much as possible. And the reason also for this is... Um, Open source, well, I don't have to convince you about the use of open source. That's good, you know, and the, the false dam with thousands of people. And um, um, I want to give managers a, one reason less not to choose open source. Oh, it doesn't do single sign -on. Yeah, yeah, it does. Here's the, 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 the book of recipes. <laughs> yeah, it triggers. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, what I would call recipes, which aren't recipes, and I'll <laughs> probably learn in a few minutes why, but to me, they're recipes. Um, and um, uh, so that open source can sort of conquer the world, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, um, in conclusion, is it. Anybody here who thinks, yeah, this is useful, I'll have a look at it, I'll try this, this, this I can use, or was it more like, oh, this is interesting, thanks. The English and the Dutch... Sorry, what? <laughs> the English and the Dutch interpretation. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah very useful. <laughs> so useful. You're Dutch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. So uh, let's let's make it a democracy in, in the end. Who thinks he was going to use this? Maybe in some way. Oh wow! This is you know this this is it's really touching. Thank you. Okay. Who thinks? Well, this was maybe an interesting talk, but it's not relevant to my business. Okay. Thank you at least for being here and taking allowing me to talk to you. And who thinks, well, this was really crap and a waste of my time in life. <laughs> I can't get that hour back ever. Oh, nobody. Well, that's a good thing, right? Anyway, um, what's it? Yeah, so I'm at the end of my time, I think. So thank you for your attention and have an excellent uh, configuration management camp.